Okay, um, I'm not gonna say your name uh, because I'm probably gonna end up publishing this, but I'm making this for a friend of mine who is probably gonna have some Blazer R8 students coming through his range relatively quickly. And he wants a uh, primer on some of the Blazer R8, you know, for in particular safety stuff, but I wanna add a few, a few extra data points uh, as far as uh, what to watch out for if you see accuracy issues or you know stuff starts to wonder so let me uh let me dig out some stuff here real quick okay right off the bat here's what we're going to start with as far as tools are concerned with the blazer r8 this will also apply to an r93 but this video is going to concentrate on the r8 make sure they have the r8 uh barrel uh you know disconnect uh tool um it's just a it's just a heck rent hex wrench it's uh five millimeters as long as you have a five millimeter it's fine also for the um also for the uh for the scope base uh or for the rings if they're factory blazer rings on the factory blazer scope base uh you only need a two mil two millimeter hex wrench for the uh, hex heads on the bottom of the rings and for the base the bottom of the base you'll need this um this blazer uh tool now this is probably the one that's going to put you in a trick bag because this is not r8 or r93 specific but it looks like a screwdriver but it's almost like a knife it's very thin so if you don't have this or they don't bring this and uh stuff starts coming loose you need to make some adjustments um we'll have to uh you know probably do with a pocket knife or something so try to try to tell your folks to bring bring this tool just in case they need it all right Blazer R98, uh, you will typically see people show up at your range with a hunting version of this gun. This is obviously really tactical looking, but it doesn't really matter. I might even take this off, this thing off here. So, <clears throat> doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a GRS chassis system, but it basically functions the same. This just looks tactical. So, obviously my friend knows that. So. The, uh, the R8 is a, uh, so I'm going to unlock it first. The R8 is a straight pull system. You know, go, you, you, know you, you fire it, you cycle the action, you do it like that. Now, the trick bag on this gun is, so this is locked. This action is locked close. This is the, uh, this is the, the safety. So what you do is you push the safety forward. That will enable you to fire the gun and unlock, unlock the action. Now, to put it back on safe because this is spring loaded, what you actually do is you push at the bottom of this and it goes down and locks the gun. Additionally, from a safety perspective, when this gun is on safe, it is not firing pin blocked. The firing pin is completely decocked. So you could beat somebody to death with this gun. This gun is not gonna go off. So it's a completely uh, decocked system. Now, one more little trick. This is locked, can't open the action, dead gun on safe. If you want to open the action, but not uh, not actually uh, cock the action, you just push up very lightly. See how much that moves? Just a little, just a hair. Push it up forward. Action will unlock, and you can cycle it back. Okay, so pretty easy, but it's something that you know a lot of people may not pick it up. The, the, the you know the small points, uh, you know when you're when you're if you're not used to this gun. So. Another thing with this gun, let's go ahead and put it on fire, is the magazine is also part of the trigger guard, trigger group. So uh, this entire magazine comes out of the gun and you can load ammunition. Uh, you know, you slide them in, uh, you, know, as, you know, as you need. That should be pretty obvious. This insert can be changed uh, for various calibers. We'll, we'll go into more of that in a second. As far as uh, hunting is concerned, you may have noticed something that just happened. The Blazer system is designed if the action is off safe, ready to fire, and you pull out the R8 magazine, it kills the gun. So if you're in a situation where you know you need to to you know to work the uh, to work that you know you know reload the gun, you could have a dead gun. So let's go ahead and check this out. Pull it out. Put it back in, still good, still on fire. Pull it out, close the action without a magazine in, gun goes dead. 
keep that in mind as to, you know, whether you're hunting deer or Cape Buffalo, what's going on. So <clears throat> other safety things to start off with on the blazer. <clears throat> Every instructor should do this right away. Blazers have a very, very, very high fiddle factor because you can change calibers. This, the MI by my middle finger, notice the MI at the back of this barrel. That is a case head designation. So if you put a magnum barrel or a, you know, without a correct magnum bolt head, you have the recipe for disaster. So if you have people showing up at your range with Blazer R8s, the first thing you need to do is you need to say, hey, what caliber are you shooting today? Now we're gonna give you a number and you're gonna look on the side of all factory Blazer barrels and there will be a case head designation. You crack open the action and right there, that two letter mnemonic better match. If it doesn't match, you're done. So, I mean, it's that gun is not allowed to be shot. It's gonna hurt somebody. So that is a major, major safety check. <clears throat> also, on the blazers, you may run into this. You can see some blazer R8s that do not have a mag or don't have a removable magazines. That's fine. Um, then you know everything I just said with the with the magazine and the trigger group doesn't apply. However, at the base, inside the base here at the front, at the front of this magazine, you'll see a little slide. There's a little slider button right there. If you insert this in the gun and you slide it backwards that will lock this magazine into the gun so if for example you are a dangerous game hunter and you don't want to risk risk having your magazine come out of your gun you can disable that feature so if you show up at the range and somebody has an r8 that looks like it has the two thumb points to the press to remove the trigger group and it doesn't come out that's a clue that this it's hard to get it back unlocked at this angle there you go and it comes out <clears throat> all right let's talk about magazines real quick magazine inserts uh you'll see on the side here two little two little plastic divots this magazine insert you can stick your finger in, this is a plastic unit, you can stick your finger in, pull, pull that down to clear those divots, and you can pull that insert out. The side of that insert will tell you what calibers it is for. So if you're having function issues and you know someone's shooting Excalibur and it doesn't seem like it's loading the rounds, pull this out, check it, make sure it's correct. Let's see here goes back in the same way just push it in it'll click in it goes up and down like that standard uh, uh, flat spring at the bottom of that <clears throat> let's talk about let's talk about the uh, the scope bases on blazer um, you can get uh, Picatinny rails, 1913 rails. You can get aftermarket tally makes bases. Um, so if you have some of those and they're permanently fixed to the barrel, you can ignore this. But typically most of the high-end Blazer guys are gonna stick with factory Blazer parts. And so you're gonna have to look at this Blazer base, okay? Or this, yeah, the scope base. So this is a quick detach system. Let me show you, it flips on and off, okay? That, that's how you unlock it. And then you can rotate it Get it on film, rotate it forward, rotate it forward. That comes completely off, all right? And when you put it back on, make sure it's down, back, back, flip them forward. See if they're, uh, see the little lines, those are level. That's to show you, um, you know, that that's as far forward as it goes and it kind of shows you what level is. These should not be crazy hard to close. I mean, they, they, the gun does do a very good job returning zero. It could be off just a hair, but you shouldn't have to really thumb that super hard uh, to get that lock into place. If it does, you're gonna ha you have a problem. You risk breaking that. And now we are back to the tool that I mentioned earlier. Um, 
this tool goes into these slots. You can adjust, obviously, tighter or uh, looser as you see fit. Um, chances are someone's gonna show up with a base that, that closes on, that's gonna, not gonna be a problem. But if you uh, maybe start shooting loose, you may have to tighten that up. Just keep that in mind, that's why you're gonna need this tool. One more thing here, let me add this. Let me go ahead and add this for people that have reloads. Um, you know, second magazine, second trigger group. Sometimes you'll see they come with a uh, plastic guard and you know, let's say you're in a dirty environment. Um, you, they're even designed in such a way that you can hold it with your fingers. That comes off, put it up into the gun. So uh, just a little trick to keep in mind. I mean, keep it horizontal, but you know, that's, that's a, th those covers are available and you will see some of the blazers uh, if they don't have a uh, magazine trigger group in them, sometimes you'll see a blanking plate that will go over that. I do not have one of those because I just usually keep a magazine in my gun. So just keep in mind that if you're if you're on a hunt somewhere and the pH requires the gun to be unloaded and they want the they want this out of the gun and you're worried about stuff getting in the gun, you can get a blanking plate maybe while you're in transit. Just something to keep in mind. Just had delivery guys show up, had to stop for a second. So this is a barrel change system. And let's talk about that in reference to what you may be facing. Someone's on your range and you're shooting a high round count course. You could have a situation where the barrel could come loose. It's not something that typically happens with blazers, but uh, I would say most blazer owners are hunters, not precision shooters, and they don't shoot that much. So every once in a while, uh, it would be a good idea to check and make sure that your barrel is actually being retained you know, correctly. So um, you use the uh, five millimeter tool. I think it's, yeah, five millimeter goes in here to the bottom. There'll be two holes on the bottom, whether it's fancy stock or blazer chassis. Uh, goes in there, just, it's finger tight. I mean, there is a, you could torque it to a spec, but on, the way these fit, they, they hold their accuracy finger tight. I mean, you know, I mean, I wouldn't ass it down, but, um, th you know, definitely get it tight. And check it. So if you have somebody on your range, everything's going great, and all of a sudden his shots are going everywhere, and you're having problems, I would check the barrel uh, QD mounts, and I would check the scope bases with some of the tools that you know we have shown here. So um, let's go ahead and show this in case this is an issue. Obviously, uh, depending on how your the stock or chassis is, the blazers can have uh, 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 cheek pieces that raise up. Um, so if, if that is true, you'll have to lower that down to get the bolt out of the gun. Um, there is a small button here on the side. It acts as a, as, a, as a catch. You push that down, slides right out. So <clears throat> we're getting pretty deep in the weeds here for my friend. I don't think he's going to have these problems, but this is a safety feature I want to show on these guns. If you do need to change bolt heads or there's a problem, if somebody can't get the, the bolt carrier into their rifle, there's a clue as what the problem is going to be. So, well, let's show how this comes out first. Underside of the bolt carrier, there is a uh, there's a little lip right there. It actually is designed to be pulled with your fingers. <clears throat> that raises up, okay, and then you can, as you'll see it on camera. You see the hook here at the base. That's the back of the bolt head. You turn it, pulls right out, okay? Um, if for some reason you are shooting the blazer and for and it's not firing, like for some reason it's just like you're, you're you know, you pull click and you know, you're you can tell that you know, it's in battery and it's not the it's not it's not out of battery and it's an out of battery safety. Pull that bolt, pull that spring, check that firing pin, make sure it is not Make sure it is not, uh, you know, damaged or broken. Now here's the safety. Here's the safety part as far as putting this back in. So obviously, goes. I'll try to do this on camera backwards for you. Goes in. Let's see if I can turn this. Turn it that way. This lever that we used before. You turn it. Let me see if I can get this right here. You gotta push the bolt head to make sure that the that the track for the lever is in place. Now, I'm actually going to leave this out of position for a minute. I want you to notice something. You see that little, uh, see that little pin right there that sticks out? 
this pin sticks out on the rail that will keep this from closing on the gun if this lever is not in position and that bolt is not completely locked. So if for some reason a guy can't close his gun, get in there. So it'll be a little fiddly. Now the pin is flat. This will slide into the slide in the receiver. So that's another safety tip as far as that's concerned. As far as putting it back in, uh, it is the tracks are relieved. It should just slide right in on the gun. Now a few pro tips. I've gone over this in some other uh, in some other uh, 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 videos, but we'll go ahead and do it for you. Dry firing the blazer. Um, you can dry fire a blazer. You just need to be very, very careful. I would not dry fire it without the barrel on the uh, on the receiver because I can't guarantee 100% that, that bolt isn't zeroed and centered over that firing pin. It could damage the firing pin. Additionally, just from uh, good practice, even though you can bolt a say a uh, a non-matching barrel to a non-matching bolt head and close it and lock it, I also would not dry fire that. Um, obviously, you wouldn't shoot that, but you know, if you're dry firing it, make sure, you know, mini, mini, magnum, magnum, you know, uh, uh, Lapua, Lapua, whatever it is, it's all got to match because you don't want that bolt head out of position and it could cause damage to that firing pin. Let's see, anything else? Um, <clears throat> there is, this is typical. Um, I probably should have covered this earlier. This is a typical issue with blazer people. This is a manual of arms. Uh, question. So let's say you're shooting the gun. We're clear. Shooting the gun. Pull the trigger. Some guys may want to get into the habit of just kind of riding it home. What can happen is the gun can be just a hair out of battery, and it has a it has a very aggressive uh, disconnect in it. And you could actually pull the striker. It'll drop, and it may even leave a small dent into the primer. But it'll try to grab that grab that firing pin to keep it from going off because you know, you don't want the gun to fire out of battery. If the, if the bolt is not completely 100% locked, this is a German thing, uh, it, it won't fire. So the good rule of thumb with a blazer is not to work them like this. It's basically to pull, work them quick. You're not gonna hurt the gun. Oh, I kinda got beat that one up. So if you see people um, on your range and they're running blazers, it, and it can happen. People, can, especially if they're shooting groups, or they're working on different things like trigger control, and I'm even guilty of it. Sometimes, you know, you just kind of get a little lazy. Um, so just, you know, if you want to control your brass and, and control your, you know, where the brass goes, you want to look at your primers, obviously you can work that kind of slow. That's not a problem. But obviously, but you know, if it's open and you have a round in there and you want it to go in the, lock the system in the battery, you jam that thing forward. That's the way, that's the way it's designed. On principle, if you are prone behind the rifle or standing behind the rifle and you wanted to drop around into the action and close it, that's perfectly acceptable. Obviously, just make sure that your, uh, you know, that your gun is in battery. So let me go ahead and just show um, another thing. You may have uh, uh, a situation where, um, especially with hunters or position shooters, this is a very heavy spring. Um, I mean, it's, it's, so it's a heavy safety. So, you know, it's very safe. It makes these very popular with, you know, people that hunt in Africa. But you may find some users have a, you know, maybe they're, they're pushing on, they're taking the whole gun out of position. <clears throat> and you might even see some of the professional hunter instructors may try to teach karate chops, you know, to unlock and, and to charge the gun, which I think is goofy, especially if you've got a big old scope on there, like, you know, Swarovski or something. I mean, you're just, it's just, that's just ridiculous. The best thing you can do to get leverage is, I call it the uh, pinch push method. So place your index finger on the front up here of the, of the, uh, of the bolt. That's, there's no leverage, so it's fine, and just squeeze it, and you're good. So, boom, up. And you'll find that's the fastest way to, uh, you know, if you need to, uh, uh, if you're not in a good position of leverage and you want to uh, unlock this gun and make it ready to fire, just go ahead and do that. All right, it's a little bit longer than I planned. Hopefully this helps. Uh, I'll be reachable today uh, to my friend. Um, if you're watching this later on when I do publish it, 
good luck. Uh, Blauser rifles are very neat. They're inherently very accurate and um, kind of high dollar. So you see them with the high dollar customers. And uh, I think they're a blast. I think they're some of the best rifles in the world. So anyway, um, remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.